Jungle Tales of Tarzan by Edgar Rice Burroughs Chapter 11 A Jungle Joke Time seldom hung heavily upon Tarzan's hands, even where there is sameness there cannot be monotony. If most of the sameness consists of dodging death, first in one form, then in another, or inflicting death upon others. There is a piece of ice to such an existence, but even this Tarzan and the apes vary in activities of his own invention. He is full grown now, with the grace of a great god and fools of a bull, by all tenants of them should have been so sullen, morose, and brooding, but he was not. His spirits seemed not to age at all. He is still a playful child, much to the discomfiture of his fellow apes. He could not understand all him or his ways. With for their mature with maturity, they quickly forgot their youth and its pastimes. Nor could Tarzan quite understand them. It seemed strange to him. A few moons since he had wrote talk about an ankle and dragged him screaming through the tall jungle grasses and then rolled and tumbled in a good natured mimic battle when the ape, the ape had freed himself. And today he had come up behind the centaur and pulled him over backward upon the turf. He said a playful young ape, a great snarling beast with a world and leapt for his throat. Easy Tarzan eluded the charge, and quickly took his anger, vanished, though it was not replaced with playfulness. Yet the ape man realised that Took was not a move, nor was he moving. Big bull ape seemed to have lost whatever sense of humour he once may have possessed. A grunt of disapprovement, young Lake Lord Greystoke turned off, turned to other fields of endeavour. strand of black hair fell across one eye. He brushed it aside with a palm of hand a toss of his head she has something to do so he sought his quiver which lay crinched clenched crashed in the hollow halt bowl of a lightning riven tree removing the arrows he turned the quiver upside down removing upon the ground contents of its bottom his few treasures among them was a flat bit of stone and shell which he picked up from the beach near his father's cabin. The great care he rubbed the edge of the shell back and forth upon the flat stone until the soft edge was quite fine and sharp, without much as a barber does who hones a razor with every evidence of similar practice. His proficiency result with years of painstaking effort, and he did he worked out a method of his own of putting an edge upon the shell. He even tested it with ball of his thumb. When he met with his approval, he grasped a wisp of hair which fell across his eyes, grasped it between the thumb and the first finger of his left hand, and saw upon it the sharpest sharpened shell which it had severed. All round his head he went about went until his black shock was rudely bobbed with a rag bang bang in front. The prince of it he cared nothing. And the matter of safety and comfort I meant everything. A lot of hair falling in one eyes at one moment might mean all the difference between life and death by straggling strands hanging down one's back. Well, more is uncomfortable, especially when wet with drew or rain of purpose for aeration. Tarzan laboured at his tonsured ta- to a strudel task. His active mind was busy with many things he would call his recent battle. The Bogoli, the gorilla, the wounds of which were just about, well, but just healed. He pondered the strange sleep adventures of his first dreams. He smiled at the painful outcome of this last practical joke upon the tribe, when dressed in the hide of a number of the lion, he came roaring upon them, only to be leapt upon and almost killed by the great bulls, whom he taught how to defend themselves from an attack of their ancient enemy. His hair lobbed off to an entire satisfaction 
and seeing no possibility of pleasure in accompanying the tribe, Tarzan swung allegedly into the trees and set off the direction of his cabin. But what, when, when part way there, his attention was attracted by a strong scent of spore going from the north. It's the scent of Gomorrah. Curiosity, the best developed common heritage of man and ape, always prompted Tarzan to investigate where the Gomorrah were concerned. There was about them, there was that about them which aroused his imagination, possibly because of the diversity of their activities and interests. They ate to live, to eat and sleep and propagate. Same was true of all other denizens of the jungle, save the Gomorrah. These bat fellows danced and sang, scratched around in the earth, from which they had cleared the trees and underbrush. They watched things grow. And when they had ripened, they cut them down, put them in straw thatched huts, made bows and spears and arrows, poison, cooking pots, things of metal to wear around their arms and legs. It hadn't been for the black faces, their hideously disfigured features. In fact, one of them, the same colour, Tarzan might have wished to be one of them. At least he sometimes thought so, but always at the fault that rose of him a strange revulsion of feeling. Which could not interpret or understand. He simply knew he hated the Gomorrah, and he would rather be Hishta, the snake, than one of these. But their ways were interesting, and Tarzan never tired of spying upon them. From them, he learned much more than he realized. Though he always his principal thought was of some new way in which he could render their lives miserable. The baiting the blacks was Tarzan's chief divert. Tarzan realised now that the blacks were very near, and there were many of them, so he went silently and with great caution. Noiselessly, he moved through the lush grasses of those open spaces, and where the forest was dense, swung from one swaying branch to another, leapt lightly of a tangled massive of fallen trees where there was, well, there was there was no way for the lower trails terraces. The ground was choked and passable. And so presently he came upon came within the sight of the black warriors of Mont Boga, the chief. They were engaged in pursuit with which Tarzan was more or less familiar, having watched them at Bon other occasions, by placing the bait in the tra- trap for Numda the lion, caged upon wheels which they were trying to they were Trying a kid so far seemed. And when the t- timber t- seized the unfortunate creature, the door of the cage would drop behind him, making him a prisoner. It is things the blacks have learned in their old home. <coughs> I think these things the blacks have learned in their own old home. What escaped from the untracked jungle to the new village. Formerly dwelt, dwelt in the Belgian Congo, and the qualities of heartless oppressors had driven him to seek the safety of unexplored solitudes upon beyond the boundaries of Leopold's domain. <clears throat> In their old life, they had often had trapped animals for the agents of European dealers, learned from them certain tricks, such as this one, which permitted them to capture even number by injuring him, to transport him to the, in safety and comparatively to their village. No longer was there a white market for their savage wares. There's still effective incentive for taking of Nimba alive. First was the necessary ridding, ridding the jungle man eaters. It was only ever to, to privations by these grim and terrible scourges that lion hunt was organized. Secondly, it was excuse for all due separation. It was the hunt successful? The fact that such fates were rendered doubly pleasurable by the presence of live creatures that might be put to death by torture. Tarzan had witnessed these cruel rituals and passed, being himself more savage than savage warriors of Kumari. He did he was not so shot by Korodi men. He as he should have been. They yet they did not sh- that yet they did shock him. He could not understand the strange feeling of revulsion that possessed him. At such times, he had no love for Limber, lying yet he bristled with rage. The blacks had fit upon him from enemy, such indignities and cruelties as only the mind of one creature moulded 
in the image of God can conceive. <clears throat> Upon the two occasions he freed Nimba from the trap. And they followed the blacks that have returned to discover the success of the failure and adventure. He would do the same today, but they decided immediately to realize the nature of their intentions. <coughs> Upon two occasions he fled he freed Limba from the trap before blacks had returned to discover the case of failure of their adventure. He would do the same today. They decided immediately to realize the nature of their attentions. The evening trap was sent on a broad elephant trail near the drinking hole. The warriors turned back toward their village. The morrow they would come again. Tarzan looked after them. Upon his lips, an unconscious sneer, heritage of unguested caste. He saw from them far. Along the broad trail, beneath the hope of our main verdure, leafy branch and mo- looped and festooned creepers, brushing embered shoulders against the gorgeous blooms which inscrutable nature had been fit to lavish most profusely furthest from the eye of man. The Tarzan watched from narrowed lids, and last of the warriors disappeared beyond a turn in the trail, which altered an urge of newborn thought. A slow, grim smile touched his lips. He looked down upon the frightened, bleeding kid, advertising its fear, his innocence, his presence, and its helplessness. Dropping the ground, toes and approached the trap and entered. That disturbed fireball call, which had adjusted the loop, dropped the door at proper time. He listened to the living bait, tucked it under his arm, and stepped out of the cage. His hunting night be quiet and the frightened animal. Severing his juggler, when he, dra- went, then he dragged it, Bleeding along the trail, upon down the drinking hole, half smiled the city upon his old grey, grey face. It was an eight to eight man stooped the hunting knife and quick, strong fingers deftly moved the dead kid's physicella. Scraping a hole in the mud, he buried his parts, which he did not eat, and swinging the body to his shoulder, took to the trees. For a short distance, he pursued his way. In the wake of the black warriors coming down presently to bury the meat with his kiln, where it was safe in the preparations of the dango, the hyena, or other meat eating beasts and birds of the jungle. He was hungry and been all, he, he had been all beasts he would have eaten. His man mind could entertain urges even more potent than those of Benny. Now he's concerned with the idea which kept a smile upon his lips, his eyes sparkling into precipitation. My idea is it which permitted him to forget he was hungry. Meat safely catched Tarzan trotted along the Tarzan, the elephant trail, after Gomari, two or three miles from the cage he overtook them. Then he swung into trees and followed them above them, above and behind them, awaiting his chance. Among the blacks as Rebbi, Kinga, the witch doctor, Tarzan hated him all. But Rimba, Rimba Kinga, he especially hated. The bucks filed along the Penelope path. Rimba Kinga, being lazy, lazy, dropped behind. This Tarzan noted and filled him with satisfaction. He's being rating re- 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 a grim and terrible content. Like an angel death, he hovered above the unexpected black. Rimba Kinga, knowing the village was but a short distance ahead. Set down the rest, rest well, O Grebba Kinga. It was thy the last opportunity. Tarzan crept stealthily along the branches of the tree above the well fed, self satisfied witch doctor. He made no noise that the, that the dull ears of man could hear, but the soughing of gentle jungle breeze among the undulating forage of the upper terraces. When he came close above the black man, he halted well concealed by leafy branch and heavy creeper. Wimba Kinga sat with his back against the bull of the tree. His entire position was not such as the waiting beast of prey desired. And so, with infinite patience, patience the wild hunter, the ape man crouched motionless and silent as a graven image, till the fruit to be ripe for the plucking, poisonous it buds angry out of space. Loaded circling close to Tarzan's face, 
Eight men saw and weapons and the, the various sting for death for lesser things than he. For him it would mean days of anguish. He did not move, his glittering eyes remained fixed upon Ramakinka. After knowledge of the presence of winged torture by a single glance, he heard and followed the movements of the insect with his keen ears, and he felt it the light upon his forehead. No muscle twitched for the muscles of such as as are the servants of the brain. Down across his face crept the horrid thing over nose and lips and chin. Upon his throat it pulls, and turning we yet trace its traps. Tars and watch Rimba Kinga. Not even his eyes moved, so motionless he crouched that only death might counterpart his motionless. The quick insect crawled and put upward over the nut brown cheek and stopped his antennae brushing the lashes of his lower lip. Did you and I would have started black? Started back, closing our eyes and striking the thing. But you and I are not slaves, not the masters of your, our nerves. And the thing called over the eyeball late night ran. It believable he would yet have remained wide eyed and rigid, but he did not. By a moment he loaded to put the uh, close to the lower lid. He rose and buzzed away. Down towards Ranga Kinga, he buzzed. The black man saw it, struck it at it. I was strung upon a cheek before it killed it. He rose with a hell of pain and anger. He turned by up the trail to, up towards the village of Mabola, the chief. The broad black back was exposed to the silent thing watching above him. If Amber Kanga turned, a lithe creature, creature, figure, lay figure shot forward and downward from the tree above upon his broad shoulders. The impact of spring creature carried Amber Kanga to the ground. He felt strong drawers close upon his neck, and he tried to scream. Still fingers throttled his throat. A powerful like warrior struggled to free himself, but he was a child and ripped his adversary. adversary. Presently Tarzan released his grip upon the other's throat. But each time that Rumba Kumba essayed a scream, the cool what fingers choked him painfully. At last the warrior desisted, and Tarzan rode, half rose and kneeled to his victim's back. When Rumba Kumba struggled to rise, the ape man pushed his face down to dirt the trail, a bit of the rope, and to secure the kid. Tarzan made Rumba Kumba's wrist secure behind his back, and he rose and jerked his prisoner to his feet, faced him back along the trail pushed him on ahead until he came to his feet that did Rumba Kuga obtain a square look at his assailant he saw that it was the white devil guard his heart sank within him his knees trembled but as he walked along the trail ahead of his captor and was neither injured nor molested his spirits slowly rose so he took heart again possibly the devil guard did not intend to kill him after all had he not had little timber, oh, his power for days about harming him, he had not spared Mumbora, Timbo's mother, that he did easy, might have slain her. Then they came over upon the cage, upon the cage which Mumbakunga, the other black boys of the village of Mumboga, Aboba, Oga, the chief had placed a bait for Numba. Mumbakunga saw that the bait was gone. Was gone for which there was no line within the cage, nor was the door dropped. He saw him feel the wonder, not a mix with the apprehension. He prevented his dull brain in some way, combination of circumstances, a connection with his presence there as his pris- as a prisoner of the white devil guard. Nor was he wrong. Tarzan pushed him roughly into the cage. In another moment, Rumbakunga understood. Cold sweat broke from every pore of his body. He trembled as with Ugu, for the ink man was binding him securely to the very, in the very spot the kid previously occupied, which doctor pleaded first for his life, then for the death less cruel. But he might as well have been saved his plea for number, since already, directed towards a wild beast and understood no word of what he said. With his constant jabbering only 
but not only annoyed Tarzan, but in silence, but suggested that later the black might raise his voice in cries of secure. So he stepped out of the cage, gathered a handful of grass with a small stick, and returned jammed grass into Rambo Kanga's mouth, laid a stick crosswise between his teeth, and fastened it there with the foam from Rambo Kanga's lion cough. Now the witch took a doctor, but rolled his eyes and swept. Thus Tarzan left him. The ape man went first to the spot. They quiched the body of the kid. Digging it up, he ascended into the tree and proceeded, proceeded to safety, satisfy his hunger. But remained, he again buried. While he swung a lot away from the tree to the water hole, and going to the spot where the fresh cold water bubbled, from between two rocks he drank deeply. The other beast might wade in drink and drink stagnant water, but not but not Tarzan the apes. So that matters he fetishes on his hands he washed his every trace of the repentant smell, Gomorrah, and from his face the blood of the kids. Raising rising he stretched himself out, not unlike some huge lazy cat, climbed in a nearby tree and fell asleep. When he woke it was dark. For a faint domacy still tingled the webs and heavens, a lion moaned and coughed, he strode for the jungles for water. Approaching the drinking hole, Tarzan grinned sleepily, changed his position and fell asleep again. When the blacks of Mamon Boga and Chief reached their village, they discovered that Rimba Kinga was not among them. And when several hours had elapsed, they decided that something had happened to him. It was the hope that the majority of the tribe Whatever happened to him might prove her fatal. They did not love the witch doctor. Love and fear seldom are playmates, but as warrior, and as a warrior, he is a warrior. And so Mumboga organized a searching part searching party. That was his own that his own grief, the not unsurgeable might, had been gathered from the fact he remained at home and went to sleep. The young warriors whom he sent out remained just steadfast for purpose for fully ha- half an hour when, unfortunately for Rambo Kanga, upon so a sight, a thing made a fate of a man rest. Honeybird attracted the attention of the searchers and led them off to the judicious door previously marked down for betrayal. Rambo Kanga's doom was sealed. The searchers returned empty handed, a boga. Bagoga was wolf, but when he saw the great store of honey they brought with them, his rage subsided. Already to Dubo, young, agile, and evil minded, the face hideously painted, practicing black art upon a sick infant, and fond hope of succeeding, the office and spread of syrup, criticisms of Umbakunga. For the woman, the old witch doctor might mo- would moan and howl, tomorrow he'd be forgotten. Such is life, such is fame, such is power. The sense of the world's crisis of civilization, the depths of black primal jungle, always everywhere. Man is man. Nor has he altered greatly beneath his veneer since he scoured to hold between two rocks to escape the Tyrannosaurus wreck. Tyrannosaurus six million years ago. The morning following the disappearance of Ronga Kunga. The warriors set out with Mumboka, the chief, examined the trap. They set for number. Long before they reached the cage, they had heard the roaring of a great lion. Guess they had made a successful bag. <coughs> <coughs> it was with shouts of joy that they approached the spot where they found their captive. They should have found their captive. Yes, there he was, a great magnificent specimen, a huge black mane lion. The warriors were frantic with delight. They leapt in the air and uttered savage cries, all spectre cries, and then they c- came closer. Their cries died upon their lips, and their eyes went wide, so their whites showed all around their irises. Their protruding lower lips drooped with their drooping jaws. They drew back in a terror, a slight within the cage, the mould and mutually cults of what had yesterday been Wimba Kunga, the witch doctor. The lion had been so angry, a frightened to feed upon the body of his kill. He had vented upon much of his rage, till it was a frightful thing to behold. From its perch in a nearby tree, Tarzan the apes 
Lord Greystoke looked down upon the black warriors and grinned. Once again, his self pride and nobility, practical jokers asserted themselves. Lane dormant for some time following the painful morning. You see, that time he leapt upon the apes of Kennick, clothed in skin and number, but his joke was a decided success. After a few moments of terror, the blacks came closer to the cage. Rage taking a place of fear, a rage, fear, rage, and curiosity. How did Wimba Kunga happen to be in the cage? Where was the kid? There was no sign, no remnant of the original bait. They looked closely and they saw the horror. To their horror, the corpse, an in time twelve old fellow, was bound with a very cold, which they secured the kid. Who could have done this thing? He looked at the one another. Tumpatobo was first to speak. He come hopefully out of the expedition that morning somewhere. He might find evidence of death as Rubagunga. Now he found it. He was the first to find an explanation. The White Devil God, he whispered, it is the work of the White Devil God. No one contradicted to Budubo. For indeed, who else could it have been but a great white hairless ape? that they all fit so feared. So the hatred of Tarzan increased again, increased fear of him, and Tarzan sat in his tree and hugged himself. No one there felt sorrow because of the death of Rumba Kunga, but each of the blacks experienced a personal fear, a genius mind, which might discover for any of them a death equally horrible to that the witch doctor has suffered, subdued and thoughtful company, had dragged the captive lion among the broad elephant path back to the village of Mumboga the chief. It was a sigh of relief that they finally rolled it into the village and closed the gates behind them. Each experienced a sensation being spied upon the moment they left the spot the trap had been set, though none had seen or heard aught to give tangible food to their to this his fears. The sight in the body within the cage was a lion. The women, children, village set up most frightful emanation, working themselves into joyous hysteria, far transcending the happy mis- misery, devised by the most civilized prototypes, who made a business of dividing their times between the movies and the neighborhood funerals and the friends and strangers, especially strangers. From a tree overhanging the press that I, Tarzan watched all that passed within the village. He saw the frenzied women tantalizing the great lion with sticks and stones, cruelty of the blacks towards the captive, always included, induced in Tarzan a feeling of angry contempt for the Gumari. He attempted to analyze his feeling, found it difficult, for during all his life, he accustomed to sights of suffering, cruelty. He himself was cruel. All the beasts of jungle were cruel. Cruelty of the blacks as of his different hand elder. Cruelty of wanton torture, helpless. It was the cruelty of Tarzan, the other beast, was the cruelty necessary of, of passion. Perhaps he had known it. He might have credited to this feeling of repugnation, a sight of necessary suffering to heresy, her, heredity, to the gem of British love of fair plain, being bequeathed by him by his mother, father and mother. Of course he did not know, since all since he still believed his mother had been Carla, the great ape. Just in proportion of his anger rose against Gamari, savage sympathy went out to Nimba the lion. Although Nimba was his lifetime enemy, there neither bitterness, contempt, and Tarzan sentiments towards him. Ape man's mind, never fear for determination, formed a thought the blacks and liberation of the lion. He must accomplish this some way in which Calls of Gumari the great shedding, shedding skin discomfort, got it there watching the proceeding beneath him, proceeding beneath him. So all the warriors are seized upon the cage once more and drag it between two huts. So as I knew it would remain there, not only till evening, and the blacks were planning a feast and orgy in celebration of the capture. So all the two warriors were placed beside the cage, and those drove off the women and children, young men, who would eventually tortured Nimba to death. He knew the lion was safe till we needed for the evening's entertainment. 
It would be more cruelly scientifically tortured for education of entire tribe. Yeah, Tarzan preferred to blink the blacks and frantic a manner of his fertile imagination could evolve. He in some half formed conception of such as fears and his sensual dread of night. He decided to wait till darkness fall and blacks partly worked to Assyria by dancing religious rites before he took the of any steps for the free nimble. And meanwhile he had the idea inadequate to the possibilities of various factors at the hand that occurred to him, nor was it long before one did. He swung off through the jungle to search for food when a plan came to him. First it made him smile a little, and then look then looked dubious that for him to retain a vivid memory of the dire results that followed the carrying out a very wonderful idea among, among almost identical lines, yet he did not abandon his intention. A moment later, moment, food moment really temporarily forgotten. He's swinging through the middle terraces a rapid flight towards the stamping ground of the tribe of Kellic, the great ape. At his warmth, he lighted the mist of the little bound of inn approaching his, as his approach, saved by a hideous scream. Such as his praying from a branch above him, above him then. Fortunate were the apes of Kalik, that their kind is not subject to heart failure, that the methods of Tarzan subjected them to one severe shock after another. Nor could they ever accustom themselves to ape man's peculiar sense of humour, dull humour. Now that he saw him, it was, that it was they merely snarled and grumbled, angr- grumbled angrily for a moment, resumed his feeding, feeding or their napping, that he had interrupted, he had having he had having had his little joke, and his way to hollow tree where he kept the two treasures hid from his from the inquisitive eyes and fingers of fellows of mischievous little menus. There he drew a closely rolled hide, the hide of number, the head of on, clever bit primitive cooing and mounting, once we been the property of the witch doctor, Mumba Kunga, to Tarzan Solomon from the village. With this he made his way back through the jungle towards the village of the blacks, stopping to hunt and feed upon the way. In the afternoon, he was napping for an hour, so it was already dusk. He entered the great tree which overhung the precipice. He gave him a view of the entire village. He saw that Nimble was still alive. The guards had eaten, even dozing beside the cage, lying no great novelty to a black man, lion country. The first keen edge of their desire to worry the brute had worn off. Villagers pay little or no attention to the great cat, preferring now to await the great grand event of the night. Nor was it long after dark before the festivities commenced, the beating of Tontons, a lone warrior. Crouched half derelict, leaped into the firelight. In the centre of the great cart circle, and of other, of other warriors behind him stood a squatted of women and children. Dancers painted and armed for the hunt. His movements and gestures suggested the search of spoil again. Bending low, sometimes resting for a moment on one knee, searched the ground for signs of the quarry again. He posed, statuate, listening. The warrior was young and lathe of graceful, his full muscles and arrows straight. A firelight glitter upon his emblem body rolled out into broad relief, the grotesque design painted on his face, breast, and above Adam. Presently he bent down to the earth, then leapt high in the air. Every line of face and body showed he had leapt, struck a scent. Immediately he leapt towards the circle of warriors about him, telling them he's fine and summoning them to the hunt. It's all in pantomime, but so truly done, even Tarzan would follow it all to the last detail. He saw the other warriors grasp their hunting spears, leap to their feet to join the graceful stealthy the stalking dance. It was very interesting that Tarzan realised that if he was to carry out his design successful, 
concluded he must act quickly. He had seen their dances before, and knew after Stolt would come the game at bay, then killed during which number be surrounded by warriors and, and, and unapproachable. Lion skin under one arm, the eight man dropped to the ground as dense shows beneath the tree and circled behind the huts until he came out directly the rear of the cage of which Nimba paced nervously to and fro. The cage are now unguarded, the two warriors having left it to take their places among the other dancers. Behind the cage Tarzan adjusted the lion skin about him, just as he had upon the memorable occasion when he took Kulich friend into pierce his disguise. All but slayed him, but now, then, on hands and knees, he crept forward, emerged from behind the two huts, and stood a few paces back to a dusky audience, whose whole attention was sent upon the dancers before them. Those and solar blacks and they'll work themselves to a proper pitch of nervous energy, excitement, to be ripe for the lion. The moment the ring of spectators, spectators would break to a point nearest to the caged lion, and the victim would be rolled into the centre of the circle. It was that moment Tarzan waited. At last it came, the signal was given by Mabuba, the chief in which the women and children, immediately in front of Tarzan, rose and moved to one side leaving a broad path opening towards the great lion. Same instant Tarzan gave a voice to a low, roaring cock roll of an angry lion, sunk slowly forward through the open lane towards the frenzied dancers. The woman saw him first and screamed instantly, panicked the immediate vicinity of the eight men. Strong light which their fire fell upon the lion's head, and blacks leapt to the conclusion. The Tarzan known they would, the captive had escaped his cage. And over all Tarzan moved forward, dancing warriors, pulls, but an instant, had been hunting a lion securely bound in a strong cage, now is at liberty among them. A entirely different aspect was placed upon the matter. Their nerves were not tuned to this emergency. The women and children were ready. I <coughs> 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 fled to the questionable safety that the nearest huts. Warriors were not long in following the example. The present Tarzan was left their sole possession in the village street. But not, but not for long, nor did he wish to be thus long, left long alone. He not confront Colt with his scheme presently, head peered forth from a nearby hut, and another, and another, till a score or more warriors were walking out upon him, waiting for his next move, waiting for Lion to charge, the attempt to escape from the village. Bears ready in their hands against either charge, bolt freedom, and then the lion arose erect from its hind legs. The thorny skin dropped from it, and it stood revealed before the firelight, the straight, young figure of the white devil god. For an instant, the blacks are too astonished to act. They feared his apparition fully as much as they did remember, yet they would gladly have slain the thing, could they quickly. Enough have gathered enough to gather their wits, the fear of superstition, natural mental density, held and paralysed while the eight men stooped and gathered up the lion skin. They saw him turn then and walk back to the shadows of the far end of the village. Not until did they gain courage of soon, and when they had come into force, vanished spears and loud war cries, or quarries gone. Not in an instant, the Tarzan pulls in the tree, throwing his skin upon a branch, he leapt put again in the village on the opposite side of the great bull, and diving into the shadow of the hut, ran quickly to where lay the caged lion. Bringing the top of the cage, he pulled down the cord, raised the door, and a moment later, the great lion, the prime of his strength and vigour, leapt out in the village. The warriors returning from a fruitful search of Tarzan, saw him step into the firelight. Ah, there was a great there was the great devil god again, after his old trick. Do you think he would fall twice fall the reign of Babola, the chief, the same way? In so short a time, they would show him 
For long they've been waiting for such an opportunity to rid themselves of the fearsome jungle demon. As they one, they rushed forward and raised the spears. The women chill came from the little huts and witnessed the slaying of the devil god. Lion turned, blazing eyes upon them when they swung about towards the advancing war. Then swung about towards the advancing warriors. Shouts of savage joy and triumph came toward him, menacing him. him. Their spears, the devil god was theirs. Then, with a frightful fall, Nimble Lion charged. Mengamba Volga, the chief, met Nimba with ready spears and screams of reality. A solid mass of em- muscle em- embry. Em- embry. They waited the coming of the devil god, yet beneath their brave hysterics led a haunting fear that all might not be quite with them. The strange creature had not proved invulnerable to their weapons, inflicted upon the very f- their full punishment for their f- f- effrontery. The charging line was all too lifelike. He saw in a brief instant their charge, but beneath their tawny hide he knew that hid the soft flesh of the white man. And now could they understand? And how could it withstand the assault of any war spears? In the hour forefront stood a huge young warrior in full arrogance of might and youth. Afraid? Not he. He laughed and cracked his spear, setting the point to the broad, to, for the broad beast. And then the line was upon him. A great paw swept about, about that heavy wall, way the heavy wall of spear, rendering it in the hand of man by like spent to a dry twig. Down went the black, his skull crushed by another blow. Then Lion was in the midst of the warriors, clawing and tearing to right and left. Nor not for long did they stand their ground. A dozen men were mauled before the others made great good escape for those four frightful talons and gleaming fangs. The televisions fled hither and thither. No hut seemed to the difference to leave secure asylum. Remember ranging within the plateau. From one to another fled the frightened blacks. On the centre of the village, Nimbus stood glaring, glaring, glowing, growling above, above his kills. Last of tribesmen flung wide to the gates of the village, thought safely amid the trenches of the forest tree beyond. Like a sleep, his fellows followed him. A lion is dead remained among the lone in the village. Nearby trees, a man of Mboga saw the lion lower his great head and seized one of his victims by the shoulder. Then with slow, stately tread, moved down the village street, upon the open gates and on to the jungle. He saw and shuddered, and from over a tree, Tarzan the apes saw and smiled. For an hour elapsed off the lion had disappeared. His feast before the blacks ventured down and the trees and returned to the village. I, wide eyes rolled for one from side to side, naked flesh contracted, more to the chill of fear than the chill of the jungle night. Was he all the time, they murmured one, with the devil god, changed himself from lion to man, and back into lion, this with another. He dragged him with Musi into the forest, it is eating him, for the first shuddering. We are no longer safe here, wolf, fowled of wolf. Let us take our belongings and search for another village, sight far from the haunts of the wicked devil god. But when the morning came with new courage, so that experience of preceding the evening had little other effect than to increase their fear of Tarzan and strengthen their belief in his supernatural origin. Thus waxed the fame and power of the ape man, mysterious haunts of the savage jungle, where he ranged, mightiest of beasts, because of the mankind mind, which directed his great muscles and his flawless courage. <laughs>